Our lesson for today is all about loss of radicals. So in this lesson, the learning competencies are the learners are able to derive the loss of radicals and the second is to simplify radical expression using the loss of radicals. Now, let's proceed to the first law. For our first law, we have n root of a raised to n is equal to 8. So, for the deriv deriv derivation or derivation of the first law, the n root of a raised to n is equal to a raised to n raised to 1 half. So, we all know that radical form can change into rational exponent. So, since a raised to n times 1 raised to n, so we can multiply that. So, we have now a raised to n over n, and that is a is equal to, uh, and that is equal to a raised to 1, or simply as a. So, using the first law, for example, we have cube root of 7 cube is equal to 7. Since the index is equal to the exponent, just cancel them, removing the radical symbol also. So the answer is 7. And next, for our another example, we have 4th root of 16, y raised to 4. So let's change 16 to its exponential form. So we have 4th root of 2 raised to 4 which is the exponential form of 16, then y raised to 4. Since 2 and y have the same exponent, so just simplify. Next, since the index is equal to the exponent, just cancel them. And also the radical symbol. So therefore, the answer for number 2 is 2y. Next, for the second law, we have nth root of a times nth root of b is equal to the nth root of ab. Or nth root of ab is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. For the deri derivation of the second law, we have nth root of a times nth root of b is equal also to a raised to 1 over n times b raised to 1 over n which is their rational or uh, which is their rational exponent and if we simplify that since they have the same exponent we just multiply the base and copy the exponent so we have a b raised to 1 over n and after that change again to radical form so therefore we have n root of a b now let's say have an example using the second law of radicals so for number one we have square root of three times square root of six let's multiply our radicand which is, which is 3 and 6. So we have square root of 18. So we simplify that. Now, since 18 is not a perfect square, let's factor 18. And then, we have 9 times 2. So let's choose a factor with a perfect square root. So if we apply the second law of radical, 9 is a perfect square. Or if we apply the second law of radical, we have square root of 9 times square root of 2. Since 9 is, since 9 is a perfect square, so the answer will be 3 and square root of 2. So the answer is 3 and square root of 2 by applying the second law of radical. Now, let's proceed to our third law, which is n root of a over n root of b is equal to the n root of a over b, or n root of a over b 
is equal to the nth root of a over nth root of b. Now, for the derivation from nth root of a over nth root of b, we can, ch we can change that to rational exponent. So we will have a raised to 1 over n over b raised to 1 over n. So if we simplify that, we will have a over b raised to 1 over n. And after this, if we, uh, if we change this to radical form, we will have n root of a over b. So that is the derivation of our third law. So now, using the third law of radicals, so we have cube root of 6 over cube root of 2. So let's, uh, since they have the same index, we can write them as cube root of 6 over 2. And after that, let's divide our radicand, which is 6 over 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So therefore, the answer will be cube root of 3. That is uh, how we apply our third law. Now, let's proceed to our fourth law of radical. We have n root of n root of a. So that is equal to m n root of a. So using the derivation of the fourth law, we have m root of n root of a is equal to m root of a raised to 1 over n. So we change n root of a into rational exponent. And after that, let's change also our m root to rational exponent. So we will have now a raised to 1 over n times or raised to 1 over m which is the rational exponent of our m root. So if we multiply a raised to 1 over n times 1 or uh, times 1 over m we will have now a raised to 1 over mn is equal to m n root of a which is the radical form so now to easily understand our fourth law of radical so using the fourth law of radicals so we have cube root of square root of 6 so for this example, we just multiply our indices because in the fourth law, we just use the multiplication of fraction. Since we can use the multiplication of fraction and the exponent, we can multiply also the indices. Since our indices here is 3 and 2, it will look like this. Okay, so 3 times 2 is 6. So therefore, the, the answer for this example, or by applying the fourth law of radical, by just multiplying the in indices, is 6 root of 6. Now, let's proceed to the fifth law. So for our fifth law, nth root of n root of n root of a raised to p times m is equal to n m root of a raised to p m or equal to n root of a raised to p so for our derivative uh, so, so, so to easily understand our fifth law of radical by uh, using the fifth law of radical since uh, we have uh, for example number one we have fourth root of cube root of two squared cube since the index and the exponent are the same we can just cancel that remo by removing also the radical symbol. So the, our radicand will be 2 squared. So it will become like this. It will become now 4th root of 2 squared. And after that, change this into exponential form. So it will become now 2 squared raised to 1 fourth. After we change into rational exponent, Let's multiply now our exponent. So 2 times 1 fourth, we will have now 2 raised to 2 fourth. Or if we lowest term our uh, rational, 
it will become 2 raised to 1 half. And after that, let's change to radical form. So it will become now the square root of 2. So therefore, the answer is square root of 2. So I hope you understand our lesson for today, which is the loss of radicals. Thank you for watching.